Our sermon scripture this morning is found in Genesis 32, 20 through, through 22 through 28. You'll see it projected on the screen, but you're also welcome to open up your pew Bibles and follow along if you'd like to do that. The same night he got up and took his two wives, this is Jacob, his two maids and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Good morning again. <clears throat> Now, before we pray, I would like to share my thoughts that I had last week. Last Sunday, the Hollywood had its 88th uh, Academy Awards, and if you live in Hollywood, that's all you can talk about. And if you don't talk about it, then you end up talking to yourself a lot. <laughs> and the Oscar was broadcast to 225 countries and in the United States alone somewhere around 40 million people watch the Academy Award. What that means is it is sort of in the middle in terms of the size of the audience. The Academy Awards are well below the Super Bowl which is 110 million but at 40 million, they are significantly above the presidential primary debates, which are more like 10 million. And I thought this week, if television viewership was a gauge, our national priority, it goes like this. Football, entertainment, and election of arguably the powerful, powerful person in the world. The most important events for us and for our country. And I wonder if we need to think about that a little bit. Football, entertainment, and election. I think politicians should think about this list and see why people are losing their interest in politics. And you also as a Christian need to think about where today's church is located in this trend. And I think it's very important for us to think about and pray about. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing us today and pour your Holy Spirit upon us. So may we understand your word and apply it to our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, we all have our names made by our parents, and some people are very serious about making their kids' name while others don't. Actually, we have a video clip and see how serious people are making their kids' name. Let's watch the video clip. So what's in a name? Some babies are named after their parents, others a biblical figure. But for a chosen few, their name can mean a lifetime of bad jokes or worse. The faces may look the same, but the names have definitely changed. From Apple to Rumor to Brooklyn, Hollywood's leading couples are leading the way when it comes to bizarre baby names. Apple, Coco, Mocha, I mean, are we naming our children or are we opening a coffee shop? 
According to celebrity blogs, daddy-to-be Matthew McConaughey wants to name his baby Bud in honor of, you guessed it, his favorite beer. Other Hollywood baby standouts, Moxie crime fighter, pilot inspector, even audio science. So whatever happened to Peter, Paul, and Mary? Many parents today are daring to be different. Well, my husband chose Jackson after he went to a Jackson Pollock exhibit. Well, Alexi's mom and I wanted to pick a name that was somewhat global. We didn't want a name that was, like, extremely common. Hey, baby, hey, baby, hey. But before you make your child's lifelong name a life sentence, think it through. When you meet people, introduce yourself using your child's new potential name. See how people react. Hey, baby, hey, baby, hey. <clears throat> you know, my, my full name is J. Yong Jae Kim, but my Korean name actually is just Yong Jae Kim. But Korean name always starts with last name first. So my last, my well, real name is Kim Yong Jae. And also Korean has no middle name. So my name is Kim Yong Jae, means Kim is last name, Yong Jae is first name. And each Korean name also has a meaning. And Yong, my name is Yong Jae, Korean name. Yong means, you know, very popular, you know, famous. And everyone knows me. And Jae means it's money and rich and property. So I'm going to be very rich and famous. So as you know, I'm very rich and famous now. <laughs> and my brother's name actually U Bum. And I know you wanna laugh. Okay, like U Bum. It sounds like U Bum. Well actually U Bum in Korean actually that's a really good name. U means soft, gentle, and generous. Bum means smart. You are very you know, very smart person. So someday when person calls you you bum. <laughs> then think of it in Korean, okay? <laughs> then you are good people. Not too long ago, there was a mom who named her kid Lucifer. And you know the meaning of Lucifer, the Satan, maybe king of the Satan. Then the, the city council refused to register the kid's name, and the mother took it to a court. And of course, she didn't win the case. And totally irresponsible and selfish mother, I think. You know, when we look at the scripture in ancient time, name is very important to people's life. And each name carries its own meaning, family background, and history. We have hundreds of names in the scripture, but I'm going to go, you know, just few names. We know Moses, the one of the famous person in the scripture. Moses means what? Drew out. You know, Pharaoh's daughter drew Moses out of the water, so she made him the name. How about Abraham, father of many. His name used to be Abraham, the high father, but God promised him that your descendants is going to be as many as stars in the sky, as, as, as many as the sand in the ocean. So God gave him a new name. Isaac means he laughed. You know, God told Abraham when he was 100 years old that you know, your, your, your wife is going to be pregnant. So he was, he was laughing. So Isaac means laughs. The worst name of all in the scripture is the prophet Hosea's children. And one is Loami, his daughter, meaning I'm not your God. Second daughter's name is Loruhama, meaning no mercy, no love. And his son, Jezreel, meaning God's bloody judgment. You know, I wonder how Hosea felt when he called his kid's name. And I wonder how his children felt about their own name too. 
Did another kid make fun of them when they called them? I mean, Hosea called them no mercy, no love, and a bloody judgment. How did they feel about? God gave such awful names for the kids, and I guess Hosea as a father was not really happy with it. But what choice did he have? You know, he, he deals with God. God is God. There's no, no choice. Hosea had to take it. Now, sometimes we wonder why God is doing what he is doing. We have many questions on the events and accidents happening on earth, but we never know. We have to just accept it and believe that God's will and God's plan. You know, unfortunately, Jacob in today's passage didn't have a good name neither. His name, Jacob, meaning holding a person's heel. When he was born, Jacob was holding his twin brother Esau's heel. I think in his nature, Jacob wanted to be the first, not the second. And when I read it, every time I read this Jacob's story holding his twin uh, brother Esau's heel, I feel like we live in Jacob's world now. Everything should be the first. And all the media broadcast pay attention to the champion. You don't remember the second place. World Cup champion, Olympic champion, you know, soccer champion. And we don't remember the second. So people think it is important to get there. It's not important how we get there. People lie, you know, not faithful, deceive people. Once you get there, you have a power and authority to cover up your, make, your mistake and fault. So we want to be the first, not the second. We live in Jacob's world. Anyway, Jacob's name a holding person's heel, and his life was reflected on his name. First, Jacob deceived his father and his brother in order to steal his brother's blessing. Then he ran away to his uncle's house, Laban, but this time Laban tricked Jacob. Jacob worked for his uncle for 26 years, but his uncle didn't pay him fairly. Then in two years later, Jacob tricked his uncle's back. And he basically, technically, stole all of his uncle's property and ran away. Also, Jacob had to marry uh, his uncle's daughter, Leah, who Jacob did not love. Trick after trick. You know, you might think that your family situation is complicated, but trust me, you got nothing on Jacob's family. What a loving and caring family is this. Uncle trick his nephew. Jacob trick his mother and father and brother. And he loved, he had to marry the woman he who didn't know. Sad, very sad story. It's like his name, Hilding Someone's Heel. Now in the chapter 32, Jacob was facing his brother Esau in 20 years later. And Esau was coming with 200 men. So Jacob was in a state of panic. He knew what he did to his brother. So he thought that, oh my gosh, my brother is going to kill me. You know, when he was young, he was a confident, strong, and smart, and he think that he, he was the, on the top of the world, but now, time is different. He's not young anymore. He had a big family with other properties with him. So no more trick, no gimmick. In case that his trick didn't work, he had no place to to run away this time. So he had to face his brother Esau with 200 men. So he was scared. He was afraid of losing everything. 
You know, Nelson Mandela, the former president of South Africa, now some group of people have different ideas about his political career, but to me, I'm not a politician, so to me, he is the man of honor, man of confidence, man of persistence. He's a good man. One time, when he was in his office, one U.S. broadcast reporter asked him what his life looks like now compared to when he was in prison for 27 years. And Nelson Mandela said he had more fears than the time that he was in prison. When he was in prison, he had nothing to lose except his life. But now on the top of his country, he had many things to lose. So his life is full of fear and concerns. If we are more, if more concern and anxiety comes into our lives. One time uh, when I was in LA, one of my friends was a real estater and he took me to a house that he had to sell. Then the house was really huge and big and you know, there is a small lake around the house and tennis court. Then I noticed that Everywhere I went, there was a surveillance camera there. And wherever I went, I was put on the, the camera. So everywhere, maybe hundreds of surveillance camera. Then he showed me the master, master bedroom, your really huge bedroom. Then I noticed that there was a button right next to the mattress. So I asked him, what is this? Then he told me, in case that you know, this house got into broken into, then you push the button, then the bottom of the, the bedroom is open, then the, the bed drops into the garage, then you can run away in your car. <laughs> I was thinking, do you really want to live like that under that stress? And I wonder what if, you know, he touches the button by accident while he's sleeping. <laughs> What's going to happen? If you're holding on to something tight and putting your priority in it, you're going to lose your peace. And you forget what's really important in your life. So Jacob, in fear of losing everything, he asked the man of God, angel, to bless him and help him. This time he had a big family. So he was really struggling. Please help me. Give me a bless. Protect me. Protect my family. But instead of saying yes or no, the man of God gave him a very odd question. What's your name? What's your name? I mean, he came from God. He's the angel. He knew everything about Jacob. So why did he ask Jacob about his name? He didn't need to ask. Then he told Jacob to change his name Israel. The meaning of Israel actually came from two words. Israel comes from Shera, means prevail. And El means God. So Israel means God prevails. God fights. God protects you. God guides you. God helps you. So the angel of the man, the, 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 the man of God told uh, Jacob to change his name. God prevails. God fights for you. God protects you. Jacob's name is not anymore holding someone's heel. That's what the man of God asked Jacob to change his name. Technically, the man of God tried to show Jacob about Jacob himself. Who was full of himself, who depended on his plan and his proficiency, his authority. He, he thought that he could do everything by himself. And he caused him a lot of trouble last for 20 years. He ran away. It's not only caused him suffer, his family also went through a lot of suffering and pain because of Jacob, his mother, his father, his uncle. His two wives, 
They all went through suffering and pain because of Jacob. He made a mistake. So this time the man of God showed Jacob, Who are you, Jacob? What did you do? Last for 20 years. Change your name. You don't live on yourself anymore. You don't live on your strength anymore. You don't live on a builder anymore. This time you have to trust in God. Trust his authority, his control, his protection. That's how you need to live from now on. You know, God was not the center of Jacob's life last 20 years. Jacob was not fully committed to God. God was just a sidekick supporting his plan and his, his expertise. Jacob actually stood on two sides, one on himself, his human mind, human authority. The on the other side, it's just God. So he was enough to be God's child. You know, when my grandmother, when she was alive, on every Thanksgiving and New Year's Day, my family visited her. And we have a big family in Korea, more than 40 people, always visited her house. My grandmother was a very uh, clean and organizing person. She cleaned her house two times a day, one in the morning, one afternoon. So every time I, my, if I just visit her myself, I noticed that her house always clean. Then, before Thanksgiving and Christmas, she never cleaned her house. She said, anyway, it's going to be dirty, so why should I clean? So, how does she get by? Here is her strategy. She turned on the light enough to see, but not enough to see the dirt and dust. That's, that's her plan. She only turned on the two lights, entire house, and small candle. That's what she did. You know, I see sometimes someone is just enough to be called Christian. They say they're following Christ, but they are not fully following Christ. They are not fully 100% Christian. They just enough to be called God's child. But God asks us to be full-time Christian. So he asks us, Jay, what's your name? What are you doing? What are you following? Are you following your name or are you following my name, my authority, my control? So God asks us today what we are doing. Doing now, what we are following. Are we following God or are we living our life to build up our own name, holding up, magnifying our name, or glorifying His name? You know, I really hope that your life would be better and better. I pray that what you do will prosper and be successful. I really pray and hope that your prayer will be answered quickly as you wish. So God might not say yes or no to your request, but He might ask you, what's your name? Who are you? Are you following me or following your plan, your authority? God would ask us today if we are truly trusting Him, depending on Him, His authority, and His control. That's the meaning of Jacob's name, Israel. God prevails, God protects, God leads. He's our control. He's our leader. That's the meaning of Israel. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you come to us over and over again. And we turn our faces over and over again. And finally, we look to your face and realize wherever we turn to, you are there watching over us. 
So we are truly amazed at the direction you are taking us into. And it's the way that you prevail and fight for us and guide us in the way that you truly ask us to dedicate our lives to you. There is no escape from you. In your name we pray. Amen.